Hello and welcome to the talk on Where the Pain Is, the Problem Is Not, named after a famous Rolfer called Dr. Ida Rolf. And I'm going to relate this one about the hip joint and where patients might present with symptomology. This is just taken from my uh, business page. So this is me, John Gibbons. I am an osteopath, a sports therapist, lecturer and an author. Um, and I run courses under the Body Master method. And my website is johngibbonsbodymaster.co.uk. So let me just go on to this one. So multi-published author. So I've written uh, six main books, but I've also done two second editions. So it's, it's sort of like eight. And I'm doing my new book on the vital spinal column. Uh, or the vertebral column, I'm not sure what to call it yet. Um, and obviously I lecture my method, known as the Body Master Method. So as I said, this talk is going to be about where the pain is, the problem is not. And we're going to look at some case studies uh, in relation to the hip joint, more so pathologies, um, and also some studies as well, uh, that hopefully you might find of interest. So one of the questions would be this. I always ask my students this when I'm teaching courses, can the hip joint be implicated with patients that present with musculoskeletal pain? So hopefully the answer is yes, um, but just have a look at uh, this next slide. And, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So imagine you see seven patients in one day, you know, for a sports massage, sports therapist, physio, that's probably about reasonable you know you might see more if you see in um you know if you treat them for 30 minute sessions then uh but either way so let's say the first patient has lower back then the next one is central buttock groin yeah and then next one is say has hip and thigh or lateral thigh lateral uh, medial thigh doesn't really matter where it is around the hip yeah uh hamstring pain possibly outside part of the knee inside part of the knee so you know you might end up treating seven musculoskeletal symptoms but you know can they be related to one potential pathology hmm. school for thought a study done by mitchell in 2003 called the hip joint pathology where they looked at some patients where they had a pain uh, screening and most of them had lumbar spine pain and that was 72 percent of them and some had buttock pain so it's basically lower back was number one yeah and some might even had abdominal pain and then the rest of them vary between what we discussed hamstring bit of sciatic nerve pain yeah and knee pain and buttock pain but um you know in my practice and i've been in practice for a while i've also seen patients where they get you know medial knee pain yeah, and then they get other sort of symptoms as well, um, rather than just, say, the sciatic nerve, because that could be, like, debatable in, in, in theory, because typically sciatic comes from L4, 5, S1, 2, 3. Yeah, there's a tibial nerve and a common fibula component or common peroneal component. So typically, if you've got a disc prolapse around L5, S1, contacting the S1 nerve root, and that might give you sciatic sort of symptoms commonly. Not in everybody, but uh, that's where it generally comes from. So, of all these sort of like cases uh, where they've got different types of symptoms, they all related to this. They all had a acetabular labral tear. And typically, the anterior, I'm going to get my pen in this one. So, the anterior, okay, at the front, at the top, labrum. So, the acetabular labrum, which is this piece of fibro cartilage around the socket, but deepens the socket here. And then just wait for that colour to come off. And then we have a tear just there. So it'll be an anterior superior. So there's the ASIS, okay, anterior superior iliac spine. There's the anterior inferior iliac spine. So sartorius rectus femoris. And then the symptoms will be, well, let's rephrase that. The pathology is here, but the symptoms might not be there. Okay, we'll discuss that shortly. In terms of anatomy, what's the structure here? So there and there. So they connect together obviously not like that but they would connect together so that is well it's the teres ligament teres meaning round as an artery okay potentially supplies this part of the head of the femur with blood 
around here. So it's medically called the ligamentum teres and attaches to what we call the fovea capitis, just on top of the head of the femur, just on there. So it's obviously unique just to the femur. Femur is a ball and socket joint. We don't have one in the shoulder. So it's like a, a cup and a saucer. So the saucer is deepened by the labrum, okay, around here. And then that makes the ball more stable within. So it's quite rare to um, dislocate the hip joint, whereas it's very common to dislocate the shoulder joint. Let me just come out of that. So have a look at this uh, next one. So this is more of a close-up if it comes to it. So let me does that. So you can see the close-up tear. Let me come onto it there. There we go. It doesn't really look like a tear, to be honest. Okay, this bit is almost like a flat tear. Okay, so if it is torn. To have this diagnosed, x-ray is a waste of time, yeah, because it doesn't really look at labrums, as in fibro cartilage. Um, it's good for looking at bony sort of like spurs, yeah, degenerative changes like osteoarthritis to the hip joint, etc., and displays, displays you and other conditions. Um, but in terms of a label tear, you won't see it on x-ray. So an MRI is okay, an MRA is better, you know, it's like an arthrogram uh, where they inject a contrast fluid uh, and then it, it would pick it up. So an MRA, so a magnetic resonance arthrogram, um, where the radiologist would have to guide the uh, through ultrasound the, the injection into the fluid. Uh, that would be the gold standard to diagnose this. I've actually seen a label tear posterior, so this is yet the anterior superior, but I've actually seen one around this area here, and it was quite a large tear like that. And then she had it for a while, but her symptoms was more central buttock radiating down to the sacrotuberous ligament. She'd had a, a lower back MR scan, had a pelvic scan as well, nothing found. She had an injection to the hip and the symptoms went away, um, so they knew it was coming from the hip. So they did an MRA, diagnosed this large label tear, that was too big just to remove, so that did, uh, you know, like stitch it, suture it back on somehow, yeah, along like here. And then she's non-weight bearing for a while, partial weight bearing, and then back to weight bearing. Uh, but it took quite a few months to get it back to, to normal function from there. So this is where it's commonly torn, so the anterior superior. I've seen loads of these, as in loads. And the more I see patients with back pain, knee pain, groin pain, etc., the more I always look at the hip. And the more I always screen the hips and the more I always teach about the hip joint, okay, as maybe the primary issue causing secondary symptoms. Now, more often than not, if you've got a labeled tear, you have probably got this. So you've probably got an FAI. So before I move on, I always say just write down what you think this is. Okay, so you know it says it's an impingement, like a shoulder impingement. You know, like the supraspinatus can get impinged underneath the acromion process. So this is a bit different um, as it relates to the hip joint. So a femur, ball in the socket, okay, acetabula, we have a socket here. So it's catching within an impingement. Different types, the main one is what we call a cam lesion. So a first type, like a cam, relates to a camshaft on an engine. You can see this thickened area just here. Uh, normally, if this is seen on x-ray, I'll show you an x-ray picture shortly, you have to debride this, you have to show you this bit. So normally a friend of mine who's a hip surgeon says, if you've got a label tear, you've probably got a cam lesion. So when you have surgery, they normally show you this, yeah, and then repair or remove the label tear, depending what uh, the surgeon decides on. So that's the first site, which is the most common, a cam. You've also got what we call a pincer lesion here. You can see it overhangs. And then you can have a combination of both. So you can have a cam and pincer lesion at the same time, um, which is still an impingement around that sort of area around here. Okay, so it catches and the label tear is obviously in here. So as I said to you before, if you've got one as in a label tear, you've probably got a cam or, well, more likely a cam lesion is what I've seen. Have a look at this case study. So this is a 30-year-old professional hockey player complained of increasing right hip pain. So it's hard to say where exactly it was. Um, so, you know, maybe just a bit generic, just around the hip sort of area. Could be more groin, could be more lateral hip, could be more buttock pain, but just around the hip area. So some of the tests you can do, um, flexion and internal rotation, you can call this like the FAIR test. So F-A-I-R, so flexion, adduction with internal rotation. You can also call it the FADIA test. Um, similar, it's just more letters, okay? So FADIA, so flexion, adduction with internal rotation. And McGill has a test called the scour test. 
So they're all sort of similar. Um, I do have some YouTube videos on this. Okay, so just look at the fair test. Um, there is one called the Faber test as well. That can be positive. And according to the Mitchell study, Faber test is one of the most positive uh, in the majority of these label tests. I'm not saying it's like that for me, um, but it has been, you know, uh, with some pathology in the hip Faber test. Faber means flexion, abduction with external rotation. If you're wondering what the Faber, almost like the figure of four test, okay? And uh, for me, it's more the hip joint pathology. On x-ray with this gentleman, with this hockey player, you can see, okay, just here, we have this extra bit of cam thickening bone just on there. Okay, so you can see it on x-ray. So on x-ray, obviously you can see that, but it won't show the labrum. But you can see the cam lesion just on there. Another x-ray from a different angle. I was an oblique one. So I'm going to show it a frontal x-ray. Yeah, and there you can just see the bump. Let's go back to my pen. You can just see it there. Okay. Yeah, so that's the cam lesion. The side looks pretty clear. Yeah, around there. Okay, so you can still see the bump on there. I'm not a radiologist. It's not really my thing to read x-rays. As such, um, so I normally just look at the report from the radiologist and see what they have said, yeah, rather than trying to decide like an MR. You know, some people send me very, very pictures, images, etc. But you know, I can have a look. But um, I'm not a radiologist. I don't do it all day every day. So it's better just to read the report and just see what they say. Now, have a look at this one. So if I said this is not that it is. But um, if this is to a female who is 34 years old, because I think that's one of my youngest I've seen, where she uh, has got a, a very degenerative hip joint, but I've seen it in you know, 34, 36, 38, 40, and just you know, relatively young women. Uh, most people think, oh, it's an older age sort of pathology, um, but it's not, okay? So you know, if you've got some back pain and some groin pain and some buttock pain, and as I said, you know, you'd always want to check the hips, then if you've got any changes, these are called osteophytes, known as bony spurs, but you can see look how, look how degenerative this is. So no doubt this would be a hip replacement and very, very quickly, okay, if this is the diagnosis around there. More than likely pain, yeah, most of the time. Uh, when you walk in, you probably won't be able to walk very far, be painful, you'd have a limp, yeah, some form of trendelin very probably around you. So that's not very nice to have. Now it might be as a result of something, have a look at this one, um, not yet, but just the next picture with the x-ray. Just have a look at the next image and focus on the pathology and just, just have a think what it is. Um, I'll give you a hand. So look at this here, okay? I just draw. So look at this side, okay? Nice ball, okay? Within, I'll look at this side. It's hard to define it, doesn't it? Look at it. The shape of this side compared to this side here. So that's relatively nice round. So if I said this was to a boy who was eight years old, then what would you say? Any ideas? So this is normal. Okay, this is, you, know, you might use the word degenerative around here. What do you think that is? What do you think? There is a condition that affects the hip. But the boy, mainly boys, between the ages of, say, I think it's 8 to 12, give or take, well, they might just have symptoms in the knee. Okay, so if a boy around 9, say, has got knee pain, then the doctor should x-ray the hip to rule out this condition. I'm just going to go through in a second. Um, but they might not present with, like, anything hip-related, back pain, groin pain, yeah, buttock pain. They might have knee pain. And if I just go on to the picture, the next slide... So it's basically known as a PERTH or PERTHES disease around here. Okay, so P-E-R-T-H-E-S, so PERTH disease. It was named after three surgeons, leg calve PERTHS. Okay, and it sounds weird when I say this, but the leg, the surgeon is called Arthur, A-R-T-H-E-R, so Arthur leg, but it sounds weird, isn't it? Arthur leg. Yeah, Jackie Carve and George PERTHES, but it's mainly named after PERTH along here. Um, so they consider it to be a lack of blood supply. Some form of maybe thrombus, like a clot, causes a necrosis. So lack of blood causes death of the tissue. So avascular without blood. Okay, so without blood, death of tissue yeah, of the head of the femur. Changes the head of the femur to a mushroom type of shape. 
And as I said, the child normally has knee pain, more common in boys, okay, around that sort of age bracket, could be a little bit older, maybe probably not younger, but within that sort of like eight, nine, well, let me say six, there, but depends, you know, whether you're looking at Wikipedia and all those bits and bobs in there. But just have a, let's go back to that picture and have another look. Oop. I might do go that way. So just have a look at this, yeah. So mushroom shape, okay, caused by a necrosis. They don't really know why this happens, um, but they will keep an eye on that child as they grow. Um, you might find that by the time they're in their 20s, 30s, depending on the pathology of the hip joint, they might be recommended for a hip replacement. It just depends uh, whether it's as a result of a, of a, like a displacement, like a congenital dysplasia. Um, it's not really known as such, because uh, that's another condition in itself yeah, for that. So, um, so yeah, so the idea is, is that if people do have, you know, symptoms, one, the lower back, the groin, the central buttock area, the knee, then you should be looking at the hip, assess the hip to see if you find any restrictions. And if they've got restrictions, say, um, on internal rotation with adduction of the hip or the Faber test, then it depends on what it feels like in terms of the end feel. Uh, it's hard to explain it through a text that obviously need to show to you on a video. But, um, you know, it might need a referral for like an, like an, you know, like a simple x-ray, uh, but an MR scan, because typically the labral tear, I find more women than men, uh, maybe because they tend to be a bit more mobile than men. It's hard to say why. They have a different angulation of the hip to the knee. Is it related? Probably. So it's hard to know exactly why. Uh, but it tends to be sort of like misdiagnosed. Yeah, well, my psoas is tight, so they stretch it. My glutes don't work, so they strengthen this. Yeah, you know, it, it's coming from my lower back. It's a nerve thing. It's coming from my L4-5 disc. It just goes on and on. It's my adductor strain. It's this or that. But in reality, if you check the hip and it's all the tests are negative compared to left and right, then maybe there's no pathology within the hip. But if they've got knee pain or back pain, and then you were testing the hip, and then there's a restriction and they've got pain on that side, then more than likely you have to do further investigations within that hip joint to see if it is related. So there you go. I hope you find it of interest. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, you can just uh, send me an email if you want to or just go to my own website, johngibbonsbodymaster.co.uk. I do have many courses. Uh, I do a course on the hip joint. I do courses on the knee. Yeah, I do lots of online courses. I also do a shoulder, pelvis, yeah, spinal manipulation, and basically the list goes on. Okay, anyway, thanks for watching, and as, as I said, I hope you found it of interest. Thanks.